going to be going over the leader code of conduct, and you can find this on the leading, um, the leading Haiti site if you wanted to refer to it in its original form, but we're going to go through it as a quiz. So a pop, a pop quiz. So since Shell is a, a teacher, um, and I don't like cats, we're going to try to rub the cat the right way instead of the wrong way. All right. So the first one, when going outside the Healing Haiti guest house, you must make sure that... What? Am I supposed to read that? Sure. Oh, A, one of the guest house dogs are with you. B, a trusted Haitian neighborhood kid is with you. C, the goats outnumber the chickens on the street to protect you. D, you tell another team mem member you are leaving. And E, a Healing Haiti staff member is with you. <laughs> and the answer is E, a Healing Haiti staff member is with you. I think people can get a little complacent about that because you're, you're getting, you get so comfortable that you think that it's okay that you just go out, but that's still the rule that you have to have a staff member with you. Is A ever an option? A is what was a really it? Good Dogs. Idea. Yeah, totally. <laughs> just the cats. <laughs> just the cats. Okay, what valuables should be limited when in the mission field? <clears throat> A, Rolex watches. B, wedding rings if they are gold. C, iPhone 6, iPad, SLR camera, iPod. I forgot. <laughs> he did this. D, Oakley mirrored sunglasses. E, anything can go in the field as long as it's put in the security box on the top tab. Or F, leave all of the above or similar home or in the guest house. And the answer is F. Okay, when is it okay to give Haitians you meet when they ask you for it? Or what is okay? A, baseball caps. B, snacks from the community backpack. C, a couple of dollars. D, sweaty and dirty bandanas. E, none of the above. There's no giving without prior consent from Healing Haiti. And we don't really need to elaborate on that because we already went over that with Melody. All right. How do you best serve the Healing Haiti Haitian staff? And the key word is best. A, find out what their most pressing needs are and wire money to them so they can buy it. B, wash their feet when they get back to the guest house. C, listen to them respectfully and treat them as fellow leaders and team members. D, pray for them each day in Haiti. Or E, open the top top doors for them. A lot of good options there, right? C. C. <laughs> Listen to them respectfully and treat them as fellow leaders and team members. Not that some of the others weren't options, but that is the best way to, to serve them. Number five, leaders need to check in with the following prior to going on the daily field trip to get the most updated information. A, the weather channel to know if rain jackets are needed. B, U.S. Embassy for security threats. C, Healing Haiti staff, um, Elisa or Jean. D, the leading Haiti website for the most recent updates. E, the Center for Disease Control for the latest possible health threats. And the answer is um, Elisa or Jean. And they will be up to date on all of that other stuff for us. So they just kind of filter that information for us so that we're aware. Okay, question six. When should the visitation guidelines and signed related documents for the Home for Sick and Dying Children and Adults, General Hospital, Elderly, Grace Village Orphanage, Etc. get reviewed? A, when you get back home to see if you followed the policies. B, in the Miami airport during the layover. C, prior to going down to Haiti and before each facility visit. D, when the roosters wake you up at 2 a.m. and the dog's barking. E, en route to each facility on the top top. And the answer is C, prior to going down to Haiti and before each facility visit, just as a reminder. Your fellow leader is? A, to be treated with respect and admiration. B, to be considered your equal and fellow servant. C, your, <laughs> your mission trip spouse. D, to be treated better than your cat, dogs, or pets. E, all of the above <laughs> except C, partially D. We had a, a discussion about this before. <laughs> and the answer is E, all of the above except C and partially D. <laughs> to be aware of how your actions are perceived in Haiti, you should 
A, consider the people and the culture you are in when on a mission trip. B, look up at the latest American fashion trends and display them proudly. C, consider how the staff and other Haitians might interpret what you are doing. D, be mindful and aware of what the culture, cultural differences are and honor those. Or E, all of the above except B. And the answer is all of the above except B. A lot of the American fashion trends really are not appropriate when we're in Haiti. And I think we have some slides to elaborate on that. Um, a lot of the dress codes are getting tweaked by people, and I think it's, it might have to do with what they see on Facebook pages, and then they think it's okay for them to do it. But we really want to be consistent about these rules. So, um, and that's why we're going over this leader code of conduct too at all of the leader meetings, just to review it and be sure that everyone is, is consistent with it. So shorts should be to the knee. I know an old rule was that it could be to the end of your fingertips, but they should be as close to the knee as possible. Um, skirts and dresses should be to the knee and no making up for the lack of length with leggings. And then no leggings or yoga pants. I added this. Go ahead. You're doing the good part. Okay. <laughs> um, tanks should have two inch straps or wider and not show any cleavage. And then they should not have racer backs. And cap sleeve dresses or collared shirts and skirts at the home for sick and dying, at church, and then at general hospital also. Nice. And the dress code reminders. The dress code rules apply for all locations on the trip, the airport, the guest house, and when in the field. And again, don't go by what you see on past trip photos or anything else. Follow the guidelines that we have for that. Okay. And um, so at the guest house, when you're flying, and then what, no matter where you're at, the dress is the same. Yeah, because I think that's where people think that they that it's okay. But even in the guest house, there's male, female things to think of. And so just that, I mean, we're not trying to look, you know, like we do in America and um, be on trend. So we just need to respect those rules while we're there and think about why, why are we on this mission trip and it's not about us. So, Question nine, trip journals are for? A, great night, nighttime bed stories and swatting cockroaches. B, a guideline for spiritual discussions. C, to be used for daily devotions, pre-trip preparation, and team devotions, as well as other ideas. Or D, all of the above, mostly B and C. <laughs> oh, that was supposed to be the title. Anyway, the answer. All right. Is D. <laughs> all of the above, mostly B and C. Okay. When are trip leaders to be in contact with the leader trip Coach. A, when the Holy Spirit speaks to you about it. <laughs> B, two to three times while in Haiti. C, at the Miami airport when returning to let them know you are coming back. C, if you leave a team member behind at an orphanage or while shopping. Or D, prior to going on the trip and two to three times when in Haiti. And the answer is D, prior to going on the trip and two to three times when in Haiti. And that's your, your leader coach, not, necess not necessarily your admin coach. So, um, and you should have, definitely they should have been in contact with you and you should be asking them questions, giving them your itinerary um, so they can check that over. And that they are your contact person when you're in Haiti. They're the person that you should contact, whether it be through, and you should probably set that up ahead of time, how you're going to contact them, whether it be through Facebook or email or whatever or media. Question 11. To resolve conflict with a team member, you should A. Pray and hope that it goes away by sleeping on it overnight. B. Use biblical principles to resolve the conflict and encourage team members to do the same. D. Avoid the offending member and give them the silent treatment so they can figure out that something is wrong. <laughs> D. Bring the issue... <laughs> Bring the issue up with all the other team members and see if the team wants to vote the offending member off the island. <laughs> and the answer is B, use biblical principles to resolve the conflict and encourage team members to do the same. And then the Bible verse that we would maybe refer to is Matthew 18 verses 15 through 17. 
If another believer sins against you, go privately and point out the offense. If the other person listens and confesses it, you have won that person back. But if you are unsuccessful, take two or one or two others with you and go back again so that everything you say can be confirmed by two or three witnesses. And the whole, um, the whole um, I guess, background behind this is, you know, consider yourself if you were in that situation and how would you want to be approached. If you did something that was offending, um, you'd want them to have respect for you. You'd want them to talk with you one-on-one. -on -one. And you'd want them to handle it in a biblical uh, comparison. And one thing that we always say is take the high level. Take the extreme high level of how you're going to be confronting someone. And if you're confronting someone, confront them in love, confront them in truth. And pray before you certainly uh, would want to do that. Okay, so Michelle and I are going to talk about parent-child trips. I'm going to just call the other one. Sure. Right. All right, so the parent-child trips are created for children ages 10 to 14 in order for them to experience a mission trip in Haiti designed just for them. And they must be accompanied by a family member, preferably one that has already been to Haiti and can assist the child in processing their experiences in Haiti. So the trip length, the time spent in the field, and the itinerary may be adjusted to be age appropriate. So um, devotions should be designed for their ages. I, just one thing that I used is I have a Jesus calling that's for kids. And so I brought that. And, and I kind of just, I just uh, paged through it and picked ones that I felt would be appropriate for us on the trip. Because um, obviously there's a year's worth of, of choices. So I picked ones that would be appropriate. Um, and then no matter the trip length, the trip cost is the same because the staff is paid for the full week. So people are always like, why isn't it cheaper? We're there for a shorter period of time, and that's why, because we pay the staff for the full week. So. Um, and just so you know, we are allowing parent-child trips to go for the full week at the discretion of the leader. So sometimes, yeah, I mean, if you've got a group of 13 and 14 year olds, they can probably handle the full week, maybe a group of 10 year olds, and possibly not. So we're gonna let the leaders decide that. I think the other thing too that plays into that, if you have return, parent-child <coughs> groups that are coming. So let's say the child has already been there, you know, in that age range, then that, again, would be another reason why you might, you already know how they're gonna react to that, so you might be able to extend the trip to a full week. Um, bedtime recommendations. So what we recommend is that quiet time so that they're in their bedrooms at eight, um, so that they can either read or chat until nine and then lights out at nine. Um, rest is very important to maintain energy and health, just like Dale had said. I mean, you really have to be watching, you know, how, as a leader, how is the energy of the whole entire group, and especially with the kids, you really have to be in tune to how they're really reacting and interacting with everything that's going on. And my suggestion, too, would be to um, have the parents talk about that before you go. Like, how are we going to instate this rule and are we going to be consistent because um, if one parent is being you know on time getting their child into bed at eight or for quiet time and then another isn't of course the other kids are going to be like well why isn't he going to bed so definitely want to make sure that you're checking in as parents making sure that you're on the same page all right um, parent relative on the trip is responsible for parenting their own child so that just kind of speaks to what i just said um, it's their ultimate job to, to parent them. Um, again, safety being number one. So in City Soleil on water truck, making sure that the parent is within arm's reach of the child. That's gonna be very, very important because there's so much going on and the interpreters, they can't be everywhere at once and they're responsible for the whole team. So as the parent, you are responsible for your child. So make sure that they're right there next to you and you can see and monitor what's, what's going on. And I guess something that you can keep in mind with that is I had, I was a leader on the trip and I also had a child on the trip. So, I mean, my responsibility as a leader is to keep on the pulse of the whole team so I made sure that I had another adult. I, we had some adults on our team that didn't have their kids, which is a possibility as long as they know that the trip is tailored for kids. Um, but I was sure to ask them, you know, can you kind of be on Avery in case I need to attend to something else? Can you be a second person for her? Because, you know, I have other responsibilities for the whole team. 
So, um, and, and like we said, the trip is focused on the child experience. So if you do have other people on the team, you have to know that, um, they have to know that it's, it's tailored for the kids. And then of course, you know, after the kids go to bed, they go to bed a little bit earlier, then adults can have their own kind of discussions and, and team time if they need to de debrief at their own level. And then if you're going to be leading a parent-child trip um, for the first time, or even if you're leading it for a second time and you want additional input from us, we're always available and we'll be probably assigned coaching someone who is a brand new parent-child leader. And they are really fun. It's very, very fun to see the kids be able to interact, and especially with the parents, to the bond that's created with parents having that experience with their children. So I encourage you to think about doing that if it's something that's God, that God is putting on your heart. We're out of time, so I'm going to quickly go through strategies for conflict resolution. So what do we gain by addressing conflict? We gain integrity as a leader, respect, for, from your fellow team members, rules that are consistently followed by everyone, safety protocols that are observed. We're more likely to have a cohesive team, and our team surrenders to God's will, not their own. Bless you. Bless you. <laughs> okay, so conflict is tough. I mean, kind of like we had that earlier slide, sometimes the first one is like, well, maybe I'll just sleep on it and it'll go away. Um, the best thing to do is address it, but again, it's really having the tools. How do I address it? How, how do I go about doing this? And like get, Dale had referenced too, you want to go about it with truth but grace and love and out of respect and compassion and really coming alongside of them to be able to understand what they're doing and how it's impacting the team. So things, things that you want to say would be, could I please speak with you privately? We want to make sure that we're doing it away from the group. As your leader, part of my responsibility is to making sure that we use I statements. So I observed or I felt, not you statements. Um, can you help me understand why? The reason this can't continue is, and then after talking about it, can we pray together? to really solidify that support for them. Things that you don't want to say is you don't want to address it in front of the entire team. You don't want to use you statements. Uh, you don't want to say, didn't you read the rules? Don't you have any common sense? You don't deserve to be on this team. Why did you come on this trip anyway? So these might be personal things that might be floating through your mind, but that's not what you want to have in your dialogue. Okay, so behavior conflicts. I'm just gonna go through a couple of these scenarios, but there's numerous ones, so when it goes out on the Leading Haiti um, website, you'll be able to see the other ones too. I'm just gonna go through the first three. So scenario number one, we have a team member who is wearing inappropriate clothing. So it could be short shorts, They're, they have on leggings or yoga pants, they're wearing spaghetti straps, they have a t-shirt with sleeves that are removed, leaving large openings for the arm, and or athletic shorts at church. So what we want to do is we'll consult with our co-leader. We'll meet with the team member. So as leaders meet, either one of you meets with them or both of you meets with the team member. Um, review the team covenant with the team member. Reinforce the whys. The whys are really important because they need to just be reminded again of why we're here, again, what the, code of, what the um, code of conduct is and the dress code, and then pray to really refocus on God's will for the trip and that they surrender to really being here on the trip and not so much about their clothes. So scenario number two is a team member is consuming more than two alcoholic beverages per day or a team member is smoking. So what do we do? Consult with our co-leader, meet with the team member, again, review the team covenant, reinforce the whys, and finally do a prayer to refocus on God's will. Okay. Okay, so scenario number three, a team member is solely focused on one team member or member of the Haitian staff of the opposite sex, so what do we do? 
Um, again, consulting with your co-leader, because you always want to be making sure you're a team, you're a leadership team. So did you notice this? Because I'm noticing this, I'm not comfortable with this. Um, meeting with the team member, talking through it, reviewing the team covenant, reinforcing the whys, and then again at the end, really praying to refocus on God's will. Okay, then I'm going to scroll down to the very end. So again, you're going to see there's more scenarios that we could go through. So really, tips to help reduce conflict. So there, it's pretty wordy here, but each of these is really important to just kind of keep at the top of your mind. If we proactively review the contract after ri r arriving in Haiti and posted in the guest house, this helps keep it in front of the team members. Reviewing the plan for the next day and the appropriate clothing for that day with the team each evening. This is a great way to remind the team members the importance of dressing to honor our Haitian brothers and sisters, our team members in Healing Haiti. Remind team often about the need to be flexible. We talked about this in the very beginning. That when we're here, we're on what we sometimes refer to as Haitian time. And you really want to enjoy the adventure that God has planned for us and to make sure to role model this by not being uptight if something doesn't go as planned. To encourage team members to focus on surrendering to God's will and not their own will or their own comfort. Talk about and share surrender moments. Role model viewing Haiti through a third world lens, not a first world lens. So like Amy had brought up in the beginning, sometimes when conversations are happening, just encouraging them to really be looking at it through a third world lens instead of a first world lens. On Wednesdays or Thursday evenings, use part of your devotional time to discuss the grace umbrella. So Charlie brought this up on one of the trips that I was on, and I use it all the time. Really just expressing that when you're on a trip, you're out of your element, stress is happening, and you can notice things about anyone and everyone on your team if you want to. So either you hold the, if you want to capture all of that, then you hold the umbrella down. So if it's raining, it's going to fill up with water. So if you're looking for the negatives, your umbrella is going to fill up with all those negatives, and it's going to drag you down. But if you have your umbrella up, then those negatives are going to bounce right off of that umbrella because you're surrendered to God's will and what you're there for. So those negatives, you're focusing to let those go and think the best of your team members and the best of the experience that you're having there to really extend that grace to your team members. Then we want to make time at least once during each day for you as leaders to share expectations and roles to d discuss plans for the day, to talk over observations of team members, and to pray for each other as leaders and the team. This is really helpful. I find it helpful to debrief at the end of the day. So if you, a lot of times you don't have time during the day, but the, at the end of the day when the team time is done and everybody's kind of on their own, to really have time for you and the co-leader to say, okay, so how do you think things went today? Did you see anything with the team members that we should talk about, that we should notice, that we should address? Um, what about tomorrow? You know, which, which part of tomorrow do you want to lead? Do you want to go through? So just having that dialogue and then having that support for each other if you need prayer. So like if you're feeling kind of sick or you're really drained and maybe you need some personal time, just really being honest with your co-leader because they're there to help support you too. Then um, listen to God's small whispers. Don't dismiss them. So again, that kind of goes back to don't being wrapped up and uptight in the little things that don't happen, but you yourself as a leader surrendering and really listening to God whispering to you and into your heart. Find quiet time for you to spend time with God and to stay connected to him. For me, I'm an introvert, so that's always important to me. I need to find some downtime to be in my room to either journal. A lot of times for me, it's in the morning. So I like to get up early go do my devotion time with a cup of coffee and just have some quiet time, or other times it's in the evening, depending on kind of how the day flows. But just really making sure that you're taking care of yourself too as a leader, what you need to be able to fill yourself up. Okay. Talk about